Constructors in C# -sharp language are normally used to instantiate objects out of classes. They can also be used to implement several different kinds of design patterns like dependency injection, singleton, factory pattern and so on. In this video, I will be showing you how and when we should use a static constructor. A constructor can be set as a static one and when we do that, then interesting things start to happen. When there are static fields in a non-static class having a static constructor, then when for the first time we access any static field, then the static constructor gets called first and thus it can be used to initialize any static fields and properties. In this example, there is a class application settings and this class has a default static constructor. You can also see that there are four static read-only properties and these properties are being assigned their default values in the static constructor. When for the first time any of these properties will be accessed to fetch their values, then the static constructor will be called first to set their values first and then their values will be returned from the properties. This can be done to delay the initialization of this class and its static properties until the time when these properties are accessed for the first time. So let's now see the execution flow of the class having this static constructor. Over here we are writing the value of session length property. Let's now set breakpoints to see the execution flow and to know which code gets called first. So let's first set a breakpoint for this session length get accessor and also let's set a breakpoint inside this static constructor for this application settings class. We also need to set a breakpoint over here before the value is being written to the console. Now let's run this application and see which code gets called first. So the code execution has a stop over here on this right line statement. Now let's press continue button and see where this code execution goes next. So now you can see that instead of accessing the get accessor of the session length property, the code execution has stopped in the static constructor where we put the breakpoint, which simply means that before any of the properties could be accessed, the static constructor will be called first to set their values. And when the values have been set and the static constructor execution has been finished, then we can again press the continue button. And now you can see that the code execution has stopped at the get accessor of the session length property. This will work similarly for every other static property which has been added to this class. When there are both static and non-static constructors and when we create an object using the non-static constructor, then the static constructor gets called first. To demonstrate this example, I am going to add another constructor having a parameter which is going to be the session length. Now when we will initialize this application settings class object using the non-static constructor, then what will happen is the static constructor is going to be called first in that case and then our own constructor will be called. Now let's write the session length property value again to the console and this time we will be doing it after the application settings object has been initialized. So the idea behind this entire thing is that because the session length property is a static one, even though we are initializing a new object which is having its own instance. The session length property will have a single copy across every other instance of this application settings class. So we can directly access the value of session length property from the class itself instead of accessing from the object even though it is not going to make any difference because this is a static property. Let's put a breakpoint over here and then run the code again. So now the code execution has stopped over here and when we will press the continue button then you can see that instead of going to this constructor which is non-static the code is first calling this static constructor and then when we will press continue again then you can see the execution has stopped in the non-static constructor having the argument so this is how the code execution will flow when we will have both static and non-static constructors in a class also static constructors in c -sharp must be parameterless and they cannot be used to initialize a class instance so if I will add a new argument over here in this static constructor then the compiler will throw an error that a static constructor must be parameterless. When we need to have a static members in a class and we want to initialize them later when they are first accessed then static constructors are pretty useful to implement such a scenario. 
This can allow us to defer the initialization of static fields and properties until the application state is such that they have enough information available with them to be initialized. This is especially useful when we are dealing with classes which can have configuration information which should be common and available everywhere. So do you know any other interesting use of a static constructor? Then feel free to share them with us using the comments area. If you like this video then please take a moment to like it and also subscribe to this channel to make sure that you will always be the first to know about any new video updates. Until the time we meet in the next video, have a great day.